recording now. So now I'm recording again. So let's see how this works. See if I get disconnected. If I get disconnected okay. again, I'll have to um, just get better internet. Okay. But you can't see me. I'm seeing a black screen on my end. Normally oh, no, I you're am. you're you're on there. You're on there. Okay. All right. I'm going so, in line, I guess. Hopefully so what good. did, what were we just talking? So then there was, okay, so New York people are starting to break out of it. And that's good. Yeah, exactly. That's good because um, that's more further delegitimization. And the more I de see this inevitably. I mean, there's a lot of social conditioning psychological conditioning where people are given a carrot on a stick and you know they can maintain like if we just do this we'll get back to normal if we cross this line we'll be able to get back to normal and the goalpost keeps changing the conditions keep changing and then people lock down again and again so um i think people are being tested they do so that in really prison the, the, they do that in prisons <clears throat> Yeah, it's, it's definitely it's some type of psychological conditioning. For I've sure. talked to I mean, people. There's a guy on um, YouTube called Big Herc, and there's a bunch of prison YouTubers. But Big Herc uh, yeah. talks a lot about the microcosms of prison relating <laughs> to the real world. And he was relating all of the racial bullshit last year to what they do in prison, in, at least in in. California prisons huh. where he was at they keep so? they they create racial tension the guards create racial tension in order to keep the people under control fighting. yep because they know that if they all band again together they're fucked so and right. they do the yeah. same thing yeah. with um, punishing people it's very similar they put people on lockdown and then say if you're good we'll bring you out of lockdown so they keep the whole prison on lockdown to where they can't leave their rooms for weeks at a right. time and then they say okay well if you guys are good they hang that carrot out in front of them and uh they say we'll and let you small go small alleviation mm -hmm. so it's the same thing it's a prison tactics you know maybe uh uh it, you know but these are tactics that have been around for controlling people for thousands of years since re recorded history began mm -hmm. more or less yeah, divide di divide divide and conquer you know. Techniques have been refined and become more efficient than machines. Mm, um, I don't know about that. I think that they use they're I, they're just as competent at using the uh, tactics now as they were back in Roman times. Uh, the only difference is the technology makes communicating e easier, gathering data easier. But uh, you know, government hasn't. I don't know if go it's hard to say whether government's gotten more efficient since ancient times. It's really hard to say. Yeah. That's actually a good point, right? I mean, the technology I mean, is better. To the technology, I guess, maybe. But is it actually is it actually up, run better? I mean, they ran pretty good. They ran the entire world um, with uh, no telephone <clears throat> under Roman times. I think times. it requires a corporate oligarchy like we have. You know, if they didn't have um, big tech and, and media, you know, at, at their disposal to, um, you know, create these type of relationships where they can collect data and, you know, censor and deplatform and dehumanize people with the stroke of a, you know, keep however it's done these days, you know, they can disappear somebody, they can cut them off financially. So um, with this power from the tech firms, I guess, working with government, the protections that they have from government and the relationship there, I guess without that, it, it would be. Well, as the newspapers did the same things a hundred years ago in the United States and they were all, they had relationships with the government benjamin franklin owned one of, one of the largest newspapers in the country he was part of the government literally he can and he you think he, they didn't coordinate back then with those newspapers back oh, then sure. of course propaganda they did. arm yeah, yeah. the fourth state what did they i think recently they just tried to um acknowledge another branch of government in the media the fourth estate or something like that when um the well i i mean Operation Mockingbird, that's kind of what I was thinking at right now, how you yeah. see um, the media working right with the government in the but, open. But the media know? that the government, see, the thing is, is government's always going to be late to the party. And the media that they think is going to, you know, seal their 
uh, victory over the population, the, the, the media that they think is going to be their ticket to complete control is dying. Mm -hmm. It's dying. Yeah, and okay, so these legacy systems, right? Yeah, the government's like always the New York too, Times. Yeah, government. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they were the politicians were slow to get on social media. Now they're just starting to catch up. But now you have a whole new, more decentralized uh, internet starting to build. They're going to be late to that. They're always going to be late. I know. Isn't that exciting? Oh yeah. Have you opened is. up a page on on Gitter yet? Have you joined? On yeah, Joe I did Rogan the day the before. The day before. Dr. Malone. The day before Joe Rogan did, I just said I heard about it. I think maybe it was from that podcast, but I heard about it. I said, okay, I'll join it. And then next day, Joe Rogan was on it. But, I mean, I got it right here. Yeah. Hold on. Do I have it? Yeah, Decentralizing it. is the way. That's the way to have But Getter is more yeah. like Conservative yeah. Inc. Uh, Getter is Conservative Inc. stuff, just like Rumble. It's more Are like you, Conservative like Parler was? Or... Like Parler was. Yeah, it's not really de – it's not like uh, decentralized. It's – very centralized and they will they all go down the same path they'll get really big with, with their terms of service you're saying right they're going to have the same um laws that they're going to have to well, enforce and regulations and everything it's once they start getting a lot of advertising money then then all those <clears throat> promises go out the window once they get a lot that's yeah. what that's what rumble the ceo of rumble swears up and down he's not going to fall uh, victim to is he's not he said he's not he says he's already right, had Peter, he, um, hmm? Peter Thiel he said yep yeah, the Peter Thiel got involved and he's, Peter Thiel right that's what you're talking about no he he said on a uh, podcast that uh, he was already try they some advertiser already he said a major advertiser oh he's a young guy he said a major advertiser already <laughs> tried to uh tell him to remove a channel and he said he wouldn't do it so he said he let the advertiser go so he says but you know once you start yeah. once you start yeah, getting we'll made first of all what he's gonna do is he's gonna when he when it's when it's worth a billion dollars he's gonna sell it okay simple and then it's gonna go the other way of YouTube, just like that's what happened with YouTube. YouTube was oh, so th it'll grow and then sell he'll sell it, and it. And everything. Yeah, he'll sell it and then it's gonna, but that's gonna be a, a continuous cycle, I guess. Uh, you're gonna see the sites get really big and then they're the guy, yeah. the owner's gonna sell it. Advertisers are gonna come in and they're gonna do whatever they want to do, and then you're it's gonna be like the corporate. I like to call them in in my company. I like to call them corporate vultures. The corporate vultures will start coming in. They'll see meat. They'll come in. They'll fucking tear the whole website up, the whole platform up, and then they'll move on to the next one. That's what corporate vultures do. They're leeches. You know, sure. their their rate of their 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 return on investment ROI. Pressure, ROI vultures is what they are. So they're just going to go after that, and they're going to destroy every platform. They did it to to YouTube. Google's a different thing. Google was actually because they're <clears throat> go ahead because they're anti-competitive, right? What do you they're mean? They're subsidiaries. Google um, was started. Well, they're they're anti-competitive. Google was, was working with the government. Google started was helped was there was in, in Qtel, which was a, a front company by the CIA. Yeah, don't be evil. That was their that was their calling back then. That was their slogan, right? Don't be evil. It's all reverse psychology. Right Really? Oh, I thought that was like they they meant well at the beginning. Google? I, I would have no, no, some they were altruistic the government people. was the the CIA was involved with Google from basically the beginning. Oh, basically. I didn't know that. See, yeah. I thought with Alphabet, I thought when their subsidiaries became non-government organizations, I thought that's when they were. Yeah, when they started selling data and when they started working directly with the NSA and the government storing no, data. No, the CIA front company in Q Oh, no shit. Okay. In Q Tell. I N Q T E L. In Q Tell, still around. It's mm. it's like a front company that's like not like they don't keep it cool. They have people know. It's an open secret. In Q Tell. That's the website. That's a CIA. That's a that is a CIA front company. 
or it was, and it still is. They're, maybe they're trying to say they're not anymore. They helped start up Google. That's a CIA front company right there. And everybody knows it. Yeah, I mean, I just saw a Forbes. I saw a Forbes article the other day. A Forbes article. Yeah, let's let's look at this. A Forbes article that's that called him called them out as a CIA front company. Forbes in Q tell CIA. I saw it the other day. It was a Forbes article. So has your screen sharing been working? I, I'm not seeing anything on my end. But you're probably not going to. I on your phone, you're probably not going to. You're probably not going to see it, but for oh, that's fine. As any, long as the live feed, as long as you're, um, you know, bringing up the pages and stuff, because that was super good. We were on point last time. We were very professional. Yeah. Um, In I wouldn't have anything less. Anything less would be uncivilized on our podcast. Uh, CIA. Uh, there. I don't know if I could find. So, yeah. Here we go. Washington Times. C I in Q tell this is dated just so you because since you can't see it, but uh, in Q tell this is dated February 1st, 2021. In here's the headline in Q this is Washington Times, February 2nd of this year. In Q tell, comma, a CIA backed venture capital firm, comma, no shit. to make spycraft technology. Oh well, in Q tell which is a venture capital yeah, firm, a venture capital firm, and they were they started the up Google. They helped start up Google. So Google was CIA, part... not even NSA, um, you know, affiliate? That's crazy. Like, well, if it's it's like CIA's... Intelligence operation they right call now. it Central Intelligence because they are probably, you know, they are kind of connected. They get their, their noses in everybody else's... Uh, all the other intel agencies yeah. most of the other intel people yeah, so there you have it. most of the other intel people don't like them but uh because they're mostly trust fund babies that work for the cia they're mostly rich kids now they're super woke i hear so i'm not sure how they're gonna fare against the fsb but you know they're they're crafty and they got a lot of resources that's the main thing about the cia they got unlimited resources and they could they don't have to follow yeah. the law. They don't have to follow the law at all. But anyway, in QTEL, so then you can go very simply, we can connect the dots here. In just sorry, and then I'll let you go on to another subject. In QTEL, Google. So that's open it's it's not even it's it's an open open knowledge to you know, it's not something they're gonna talk about openly, but it's an op it's open knowledge that um they were involved in Google, which big tech uh, Googled in 2004. Um, Google acquired NQTEL backed Keyhole. So here it goes. So they 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 acquired a venture. So they Google acquired a firm. This is what this this is saying. Google acquired a firm that was backed by NQTEL in 2004 in the beginning. So they had the connections to the CIA in the beginning. And I, I have to do more research, but I thought there was a connection even in the 90s. So maybe NQTEL didn't start up Google. So just to be uh, precise. But they had, but Google had done deals. They're doing deals, business deals with the CIA's venture capital firm this is 2004 when google was it was big it was getting big but it yeah, wasn't at the, height of the, the iraq war and the bush administration patriot act all that was going on there so of course they could pass a lot of these you know these deals and mergers you know with without a lot of public scrutiny from it because things done in the name of you know um either surveillance or privacy violation you know or just conflicts of interest with the intelligence communities and spy apparatuses, you know, that was going to get a pass. In those days, people looked the other way. People didn't really care about freedoms and civil liberties being violated. Yeah, just people are just In fucking... Bush era. Americans are just fucking hypocrites. You know how I feel about that. I mean, there's still... There's still the governments... The, Ameri the United States government is still murdering babies in Yemen, and the American... You don't see any of the social justice warriors out in the streets talking about that. These are... In Yemen, Yem, oh. Yemen gets. Don't you're okay. You haven't you haven't lost connection yet. 
Um, in Yemen, yep. in okay, Yemen, no, 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 uh, no, Yemen, there, uh, I mean, there's a lot of East African influence. So these are literally a lot of people are African people or very closely tied to Africa. You don't see any of these social justice warriors uh, talking about that. Right. That's because they're phony. About the drone strikes. They're fake. It's about or the sanctions. Starvation. It's a starvation campaign. So you don't see any of the uh, social justice people talking about that because they're phonies. They're fakes. And they're only going to protest if they have permission from the government. And the government hasn't given them permission to anti-war protest. They're only going to protest. They're not protesting right now. How many African American men have died this year? I know it's we we're we're at about the same level last year in 2021. I think we might have been 95 percent of what uh, the amount of uh, African American men that were killed Where? in 2020. Yemen and Somalia. Though, the, no, I'm talking about in the United States. There were lots of okay. unarmed. There were there was no change. Basically, a statistically insignificant change in the amount of African American men killed by police last year versus the year before. And I mean, I can I I I don't feel like looking it up right now, but people could fact anybody could fact check me. You could fact check me on that. How, where was where was where was BLM? You know where they were? They were waiting for this year. They're waiting for an election year because they're phonies, they're grifters. And everybody knows it now because we haven't seen look, we right. haven't seen any protests. They don't, waste, they don't want to wear the public down and waste waste their opportunity when it's not lucrative. Because or, they're not you no know, Democrats aren't working with them. They're not getting any backing right now. Exactly. They won't if they were to protest this year, they know they wouldn't get backing from the Democrats. So they're not gonna do it because they're they're phonies. They're fucking phonies. But uh, I don't know, I went on a little tangent there, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's Google. And then you got here's what you uh you said uh, their their um their motto used to be "Don't be evil." The Jared Cohen and Alphabet connection. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, right. Yeah, that, that I got it on the. Joke. I, yeah, don't be evil. It is a joke. It's an absolute joke. So that used to be like their their um that used to be their slogan. Is that what that is? Don't be evil. Mm -hmm. and yeah, don't be evil. In that the meantime, Google. as they're that saying that, that, they're doing deals with the CIA. Okay, so Google from the start was uh, was was co-opted from the start, and there and people are starting to see that, you know. But all you have to do is search something on DuckDuckGo, a politically hot topic, and search it on Google, and you don't have to be a fucking genius to realize that, you know, Google's search results are sl are are basically skewing one way, and whereas. DuckDuckGo, even though I'm, I don't really, I don't think DuckDuckGo is perfect, but they definitely don't skew as much one way. You don't have to be a genius to see that, but there's, there's the proof is out there that the CIA and Google have intimate connections going back to the beginning. This article here, I'm not sure as much about because I haven't read through, I've seen this article before and it has a lot of stuff. I'd have to fact check this article, but there's a lot of connections you know, and uh, there's a lot of connections with, um, there's a, there's more to it. I know Alex Jones used to talk about the Silicon Valley's connections. They have like this meeting once in a while with all the, with the intelligence. intelligence community. Yeah, yeah, there was something like that, but I don't know much about it, but, you know. Well, you know, the connections like with Amazon, um, remember, um, just like how Google, it, there, it's in their best interest to push the narrative and sway things towards the Democrat party to a, you know, a neoliberal type of mindset and narrative because that's the outlet for corporate America. You know, the Democrats are working more with um, big corporations. So, you know, hand in hand, they get these deals with the government. So um, Google and like the Amazon servers, remember when Parler was taken down that like the public outcry, you know, white white supremacy, echo chambers, and this was a competitor, direct competitor of Google and um, Amazon for. Um, Parler you know, was like, a direct uh, competitor to to face to Twitter, which is connected. Yeah. 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 Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Um, and you got to look at yeah, no, go ahead, go ahead. Amazon, Jeff Bezos, you know, Washington Post, and 
Uh, he they manage all this all the cloud data for the government agencies, including the exactly. CIA. Yeah. So. Yeah, these guys were, but what, it's always a cycle, right? So these guys are going to overextend themselves and, uh, you know, short of, they, you know, you know, they're going to do what they can, but in this, to, to maintain their supremacy, but in this country, thankfully, we still have some protections for the individual and for businesses mm-hmm. sure. and for speech. So I think... The United States would be fine. I think decentralization, I've said before, I think the back, going back to decentralization and all that, that would be good. Oh, yeah, we need an informed, vigilant population, too. So What's happening, um, we right? Can take that. We can, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. And what were you going to say? What's happening right now? Well, what's happening right now is further delegitimization, and I think the people upstairs on the seventh floor which is of DC, I think they know it. So you're starting to see them change their... Once this Omicron came out, and then they knew that the vaccine wasn't going to have much of an effect. They knew that. And uh, now they're changing their narrative. They're saying, well, you know, let's... I just heard something today. Uh, some, some, the, somebody in Europe said, oh... Uh, we don't have to in two months. We won't have to worry about coronavirus anymore. Coronavirus is going to be over in two months. I thought, where was that? Uh, I'll look that up just so we have a source. Um, what do you mean, like a world leader, or somebody? Or no, it was like there? some government agency in Europe said coronavirus over in two months. They said it's going to be over in two months. Let me see if I can find this because it. Would, I think the story just came out today. Uh. Yeah, I would like to hear that. Okay, um, I know yeah, France here we go. Has, I, go yeah, I, read it right now. I found it. Uh, what's the original? According to Denmark's chief epidemiologist, a bureaucrat, COVID-19 pandemic will be virtually over in two months and our lives will be returning to normal. So they see the writing on the wall. They're saying, okay, guys, we're not going to get away with this charade much longer. Let's send out, let's start, let's start getting out ahead of this and saying, oh, blah, 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 it's going to be over. And they're going to the media people and they're saying, hey, uh, I, we know you're making a lot of money, but, you know, it would be really nice if you stop the, stop the coverage of, of coronavirus over the next couple months just slowly they're going a 180 it down. okay now they want to be more optimistic i don't know if they're but will the media be able to do it because uh at the end of the day they're gonna they're not People beholden be afraid. they're not beholden to the government just like what happened with afghanistan you think the Biden administration wanted the uh, media to cover what was going on over there, but they did it anyway because people were falling off of airplanes. <laughs> like, who's not going to yeah, cover that? I'm reading. <laughs> right? Um, like, it's, it's a joke, too. The Biden administration went to CNN. CNN even bragged about it and said the Biden administration asked them to fluff up the numbers and, re- you know, report, report a rosy narrative about the economy right. and cover up inflation and, and everything. Yeah. Like, admitting them to be a propaganda machine and CNN was like laughing about it not and, just uh, you know, not just um, the uh, US government the G7 uh, central bankers were getting uh, they had some meetings with the media a couple weeks ago and they're all concerned about inflation because they know that historically when inflation gets bad politicians lose their jobs and they lose them with a, yeah, alarming right. alarming frequency and Retention rates in parliaments and in the United States Congress get really low when inflation is bad. So they're trying to get out ahead of that. And they're going to try and fudge the uh, inflation numbers some more. I don't know if, I don't think it's going to work though because people already don't buy it. People are going to the grocery store. They're looking at their rents. They're looking at their, uh, they're looking at their um, electric bill, and they don't care what the fucking CPI number is from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Uh, statistics. They don't give a fuck. They just know that their 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 money is not going further. So they're gonna try that. 
and they're gonna they're gonna try and stay in denial for as long as possible and and it'll work for you know maybe 10 percent 15 percent of the population the really stupid ones but most people are gonna be like hey this is fucking up my money you know so what's going on yeah, out otherwise see. Um, what's going on? Um, Tell me what. Elsewhere? Yeah, what's going on? With, what'd you hear about today or this week? And that's interesting. Um, it's kind of winding down right now. I don't know. Um, we're supposed to meet up with some friends here at the beach. I guess. When do you have to go? You have to go soon. Um, pretty soon. Well, the thing is, I don't have. I'm looking at a black screen and everything. And I can't see the Forbes article that you were going over. Well, I guess you'll see it when we, uh, when we, uh, yeah, I don't know. You have to, I think, I think you'd have to go, uh, on the laptop or something. I'd have to, maybe if I screen share on Skype, I can screen share on Skype, can't I? Share screen and then it should work. Let me see. This was a nice little practice run though. This good. Yeah, I think I got it figured out how to do it. Now it should come up in a minute. No? Did anything come up? Um, no, it didn't come up. Evelyn's texting me now. Oh. Yeah, I guess you have to be on uh, the laptop. I just hit share screen. Yeah. Okay, so another thing before you go, we got one more important thing. Interest rates, just remember I said this because you're going to start hearing more about it. Another prediction? No, it's not that prediction. It's just that interest rates, uh, 10-year, all the uh, benchmark interest rates are going up like crazy. And uh, you're going to start hearing more about this. And uh, give it a month, give it maybe less than a month, and there's, they're going to be complaining about it, saying that the government needs to do something. It's going to be interesting to see what the government does because they have, they have a choice. Let interest rates go up or let inflation go crazy. So either way, they're fucked. So keep an eye out for that. But I think we're, you, you can go ahead and uh, go because Evelyn's calling you. And uh, I guess uh, I will stop streaming right now. Right this, right okay, here. Okay, we made it about 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah that's minutes. not bad. That's not bad. We'll get, we'll, we'll figure, at least I figured out how to set it up. So that's good. All right, then. Yeah. Catch you later. Yeah, I'm going to do it from my um, laptop, my laptop next time. It's Maybe it'll be, setup anyway. yeah, I think that'll be better, but I think I got the setup to where we can, we can at, okay. get it working right. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Right, yeah, because um, it got dark, and now I feel like I have a spotlight. I have this little light pointing at me, and I yeah. started feeling like I had an interrogation light, and it was fucking with me. So. All right, it's all good. It's Don't another worry troubleshooting. About it. It's good. It's all good. Don't worry about it. We okay. tried. We're going to get it. We'll get it We'll get it figured out one day. All right. All right. Talk to you later. I'll talk to you later. All have right. a good night. All right, good night.